Hi guys, it's Rachel. Today is December 9th. It is a Tuesday and it is currently 12 p.m. It's a lovely day here in Vancouver and right behind me is Starbucks. So let's get something festive to drink. Today's game plan is to reply to some emails, um, also reply to some comments on YouTube and Instagram where I'm most active, and hopefully write another script for an upcoming video on YouTube. Alright, so I just finished working at Starbucks. I was able to reply to a couple emails and also reply to some of you on YouTube and Instagram. Can I just say thank you so much guys for giving me purpose and for letting me do what I love to do. Now the sun is peeking through and I just cannot waste this opportunity to take a lovely stroll around the neighborhood and also show you what's around the River District area. So let's go. Now, the River District area is an up-and-coming neighborhood. It is located between Marine Drive and Boundary. And it looks quite promising because it appears to be like a one-stop shop for like everything that you need. If you notice, there's a lot of construction going on in the background. And it looks so great. It looks so modern and clean. But they definitely made it into like a cozy, homey type of neighborhood. All right, guys. Now, let me show you my most favorite part about this neighborhood. And I'm current here. It's this pier slash walkway that leads all the way to the Fraser River, which you see right now. I mean, the camera probably doesn't give it any justice for how beautiful this area is. And the fact that this is just like 10 minutes away from where I am and I get to kind of cherish this view whenever I want, like, I'm grateful. Truly am. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this mini vlog. It really makes me so happy that I get to show you around my hood and also paint you a picture of what it's like living in Vancouver. Now moving on to the topic of this video, I'll be discussing another study permit refusal case and I'll leave myself to explain it in the next part. When making an application to study in Canada, it is imperative to show proof of financial support. But I also understand that not all of us have enough finances on our own to support this huge undertaking which is to study in Canada. But thankfully, we may know a generous person that can support us financially. And this situation is very common and is acceptable. So in this video, I will share an actual study permit refusal case wherein the applicant got their study permit application refused even though they had a financial sponsor. Hopefully this can provide some insight on how we can strengthen our case should someone else help our cause by pitching in. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with the facts. Our student is a citizen of Ukraine. She graduated a bachelor's in philology, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct, with a specialization in English. In April 2014, she was accepted into a business administration program at Centennial College. In her study permit application, she included a letter from a family friend who happens to be a lawyer based in Edmonton, Alberta. In that letter, the lawyer friend mentioned that he is willing to fully support and pay for her studies. But in the same month, on April 30th, 2014, her study permit application was refused. When they looked at the GCMS notes, this is what the visa officer stated. First, the student does not have funds of her own. And second, the letter from the family friend, aka lawyer, did not provide clear reasons as to why they're supporting the student's education. But that did not discourage our student from trying again. As soon after, she submitted another study permit application on June 2014. In her second application, she included the following. A new letter written from the family friend, proof that the lawyer friend opened a 40 grand GIC or Guaranteed Investment Certificate under the student's name and proof that he had paid for the student's first term tuition fees. Wow, this lawyer friend is generous. Is that from Amazon? 
where can I get one? Now pay close attention to this next part. The other important thing that she included in her new application was a letter from the friend outlining his reasons for supporting her education. First, the lawyer friend mentioned that he had known her and her family for over 4.5 years. He also mentioned that he does have three grown children, which he has financially supported in their education. And because of their education, all of his children are doing well in life. So his reason to support the applicant was due to his desire and ability to help one more young person do well in life. And that means improving their career prospects by getting quality education. I mean, that sounds pretty convincing, right? However, that didn't seem to be convincing enough for the visa officer because unfortunately, her second study permit application was refused. When they requested the GCMS notes, this is what the visa officer had to say. First, it wasn't clear enough for the visa officer why the family friend would pay such a huge amount of money for the student. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of sus because I can't even convince my sisters to buy me milk tea. And this person who just downed 40 grand for a GIC is supporting a family friend? Talk about going above and beyond the call of duty. Second, the officer did not believe the statement of the family friend and may have suspicions about their arrangement. The officer went as far as thinking that there may have been some strings attached. Sus. But our resilient student did not take no for an answer because shortly after, she appealed the decision to the federal court. And guess what? The judge did agree with the student and gave the following reasons. First, if the visa officer was concerned about the financial arrangement, the visa officer should have given the student an opportunity to explain. However, since no opportunity was given, the judge thinks that the officer's decision was simply unreasonable. And with that, the judge decided to have another visa officer review the study permit application. Now, the case study didn't mention anything if she got through or not, but I am happy that our resilient student got another chance on her study permit application. So here are the things that she did right on her second application. To start, it was much stronger in terms of evidence. First off, there was a 40,000 Canadian dollar worth in GIC under her name, which means she has full access and control over this money. Second, the lawyer friend already paid for the first semester's tuition fees, which means there are only two semesters left to finish the program. Third, in the letter, the lawyer friend mentioned that he knows her family, and so a connection is established. And lastly, the friend's motivation to support her education was sincere, as he genuinely wanted the best for this young person to succeed in their career and eventually improve their life. Also, may I quickly add that this friend happens to be a lawyer, so he probably wrote a very convincing letter of support. But it just goes to show that even if you are a lawyer writing letters and providing evidence, your application can still be refused. So what can we learn from this case study? Establish a relationship. If the person sponsoring you is not a direct family member, such as parents, it could be your uncle, your aunt, your in-laws, or cousin that could be sponsoring you. If that's the case, they could write an explanation letter and indicate their motivations to sponsor you. This brings me to my second point, which is all about motivation. Ask your sponsor, what is their motivation to be this generous? Is there an expectation that you will pay the money back once you finish? Or is it simply out of the goodness of their heart? Make sure that it is clearly explained and is persuasive in the letter of financial support. Lastly, receipts, receipts, receipts. Have a lot of evidence. If you provide ample support to show that you are financially capable to study in Canada, then the visa officer may not see this as a reason to reject you. However, if there is the off chance that you do get a rejection your way, then at least you have enough evidence to show that you can appeal the decision to the federal court. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope you learned a thing or two from this case study. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, comment, and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for watching. Be safe and be kind. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.